Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems Exchange of Health Information. This is Lecture B, Health Information Exchange Organizations. The learning objectives for the Exchange of Health Information Unit are, number one, to list the quality problems in healthcare that Health Information Exchange is intended to remediate. Two, describe the nature of Health Information Exchange technology assets that Health Information Exchange is designed to interconnect. Number three, explain the motivations, capabilities, and challenges of Health Information Exchange organizations. Number four, explain the motivations, capabilities, and challenges of using meaningful use and direct to advance Health Information Exchange. And number five, describe the future directions for Health Information Exchange. Interconnecting hospitals and large provider organizations was viewed as one approach to advance health information exchange. The idea here is that such organizations, these large organizations, provide a lot of care. They see a large number of patients and they have a lot of data on each of those patients. However, there are challenges with interconnecting these large organizations. One of these challenges is leadership and organizational models. It's unclear who should bear responsibility for getting large organizations in a particular region to interconnect and address all of the other challenges that exist with respect to this kind of interconnection. There needs to be a structure for governance and for management. Second is financial sustainability. Any kind of interconnection will have technical and operational costs, and it's not clear what the mechanism should be to pay for these expenses. Another challenge is the technology itself. There are data interfaces that need to be built, and these may be complex data interfaces. There are data networks that need to be created, and these need to be designed and developed. Another challenge is privacy, and just because a technology can be developed to move a patient's data around, does that mean that a patient's data should be moved around? Does that patient want that to happen? Where do the patient's wishes get involved? Do federal and state privacy laws fit in with developing visions of how the exchange of health information will take place? Another challenge is patient matching. So in the United States, we do not have a universal patient identifier. If I go to one facility and identify myself as, quote, Gil Cooperman, unquote, and I go to another facility and I identify myself by my full name as, quote, Gillard J. Cooperman, unquote, how would one facility know with certainty that I am the same person that went to the other facility? Another challenge is the structure and the coding of the clinical data. If I want to intermingle data from two institutions, maybe laboratory results, but those data are represented differently in the databases of the two organizations, how would I be able to intermingle those data? The way the data are represented presents challenges for health information exchanges. In some instances, there are standards to represent particular data types, but those standards are not completely mature. They would not address this problem completely. Additionally, there may be competitive concerns among healthcare providers. A healthcare provider may be concerned that competitors would have the ability to understand the provider's practice patterns and use that information in adverse ways. Similarly, a provider may be concerned that a competitor would have the ability to identify who the provider's patients are and pursue those patients with marketing techniques. There are subtle but real concerns about competition among provider organizations as health information exchange networks are developed. To address all of these challenges, to interconnect large provider organizations, a concept emerged in the mid-2000s called a Health Information Exchange Organization, or HIEO. This concept was advanced by the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, which was established as a division of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in the mid-2000s. The premise of an HIEO is that a new kind of organization is needed to encourage healthcare providers to work together to address the challenges to the exchange of health information. For example, the technology challenges, the privacy challenges, and financial challenges, the governance, and other challenges. 
Further, the Office of the National Coordinator encouraged these activities at the state or regional level because most patient movement occurs within those boundaries, and so the benefits would accrue within those geographies, and so the HIEO efforts should be organized within those geographies. Some HIEOs are known as Regional Health Information Organizations, or RIOs. Some other HIEOs are known as state level health information exchanges. In Indianapolis, there was a successful example of an HIEO. In the Indianapolis area, there was the Indiana Network for Patient Care, which became the Indiana Health Information Exchange, or IHI. This has been developed over approximately 15 years, beginning in the early 1990s. In addition, in the mid-2000s, there was some funding available to advance HIEOs. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality and local and state governments provided funding for demonstration projects. The concept of Health Information Exchange Organization caught on, and by 2010, there were approximately 200 such organizations nationwide. The concept of Health Information Exchange Organization was especially and strongly adopted in New York State, where the term RIO was commonly used. New York State provided more funding than any other state for health information exchange organizations. In particular, there was $400 million of funding over an eight-year period to advance health information exchange and healthcare programs. For example, patient-centered medical homes that would be enabled by a modern health information exchange infrastructure. The funding that New York State provided was used across the state. Initially, close to 20 HIEOs, also known as RIOs, were established. However, over time, there have been several consolidations and mergers. Currently, there are eight RIOs in New York State. There is one in the Buffalo region, the Rochester region, Syracuse region, Albany and Northern New York State region, Hudson Valley, and Downstate, or metropolitan area of New York State, where half of the state's population lives. In this area, there are three separate regional health information organizations. Several other states across the country have had state-led initiatives to advance the exchange of health information among healthcare providers. However, New York State is notable in that it has invested far more in these activities than any other state. One of the regional health information organizations in New York State is known as HealthX. HealthX is a nonprofit organization, the mission of which is to provide health information exchange services to healthcare providers in the New York City metropolitan area. We'll describe HealthX in some detail to give you a sense of what these regional health information organizations are like. The geographic area that HealthX serves is the New York City metro area, including the five boroughs and two counties on Long Island. HealthX has over 165 participating organizations that are providing care at over 550 facilities. Examples of the kinds of members or participating organizations that HealthX has are hospitals and healthcare systems, long-term care facilities, community-based organizations, behavioral health organizations, physician practices, and health plans. Several healthcare provider organizations are members of HealthX and participate in health information exchange. HealthX uses two technologies to enable health information exchange. One is the Master Patient Index. The Master Patient Index is a solution to the patient matching problem. Since there is no consistent identifier across the multiple HealthX members, each HealthX member contributes its registration file to HealthX. HealthX can then look across these registration files and using data elements such as the patient's name, date of birth, address, etc., they can identify with high probability who is likely to be the same patient across facilities. The other technology that HealthX uses is to actually retrieve the data. The way this is done is that each participant takes data from its core system and places them on an edge server. This edge server is accessible to the HealthX interface engine. When a clinician requests data using the HealthX browser, first the master patient index identifies which of the HealthX members that patient has been to previously, 
and subsequent of that, the HealthX interface engine goes to the edge servers at each of the participants and retrieves data from the participant, aggregates that data, and then displays that data to the clinician who has requested the data. HealthX displays the data in a results review application. This results review application is not very different than the kinds of results review applications that are available in electronic health records. The HealthX results review application displays data elements such as encounters, allergies, vaccinations, diagnoses, lab results, radiology reports, etc. The only difference between a HealthX results review application and that in an electronic health record is that HealthX displays data across multiple organizations. HealthX is an example of an HIEO, and there has been a lot of progress with these kinds of organizations over the last several years. However, there are issues and challenges that health information exchange organizations face. One challenge is that health information exchange organizations may have a burdensome privacy policy. For example, in New York State, healthcare providers can access data from a RIO only if the provider's organization has obtained the patient's written consent. Getting the patient's consent can be difficult to operationalize because it requires having someone explain the ramifications of allowing the provider to access the patient's data from the RIO getting the patient's signature on a form, and putting the form into the medical record. Using this approach to obtain the consent adds one additional step to the process of registering patients when they arrive for their health care encounter, which is frequently already a hectic process. In New York State, the patient's consent is durable, which means that it only needs to be collected once, not at every encounter. An additional challenge is fitting the use of the HIEO technology into the workflow. In the example of HealthX, the HIEO technology is the HealthX portal. To use the HealthX portal, the provider has to access an application other than the EHR. Switching applications can create a hurdle to the use of the HIEO technology. Another challenge for the HIEO model of health information exchange is that although the provider has access to a significant amount of the patient's data, it may be tricky to find specific information that is relevant to the encounter at hand. Also, although an HIEO may provide access to a significant amount of data, it may not contain all of the patient's data. There may be organizations in the community that are not part of the HIEO or an organization may be participating in the HIEO but not contributing all of its data to the HIEO. The adoption of HIEO technology has varied across various states and regions. For example, in New York State, there has been more adoption upstate than in the downstate region, which includes the New York City metropolitan area. In general, nationally, the use of technology provided by health information exchange organizations is not yet widespread. In 2014, a literature review was performed of studies of the impact of health information exchange on a variety of parameters. Some of the results are as follows. The review found that there are 21 studies on the use of health information exchange. In these 21 studies, there were 13 organizations represented, of which six are in New York. Those studies found that the health information exchange capabilities were generally used in less than 10% of encounters where health information exchange was available. This may be reasonable because not every encounter requires the use of health information exchange. There were 12 studies on the impact of health information exchange on resource use and there was low quality evidence that the use of health information exchange led to decreased utilization, for example, less imaging, and also lower emergency department costs, such as tests ordered in an emergency department encounter. There were 17 studies of sustainability, and only 25% of health information exchange organizations felt to be sustainable. There were 38 studies of attitudes, barriers, and facilitators, and it was felt that health information exchange was to be valuable to providers, but there are barriers such as technology, workflow, costs, and privacy. 
In conclusion, this lit review stated that health information exchange organizations have some impact on cost and quality of care, but more research is needed. There are several hurdles to scaling the health information exchange organization model. Number one, it is complex. There are privacy and governance models needed. The technology is complex and expensive. The expense comes from the cost of the data interfaces that are needed to be created from the member organizations to the HIEO's hub and from the master patient index. There needs to be enough data, so there is a critical mass to engage a lot of providers and make sure you get a lot of data from each provider. In addition, since there would be a lot of data, there needs to be approaches to handling the volume of data. For example, summarization of extensive amounts of clinical data is needed. There are consent models for privacy, and the RIO needs to fit in the workflow. These are some of the challenges to scaling the RIO model. There are additional concerns about the HIEO model. Julia Adler-Milstein and her colleagues, in an article in 2013, wrote that operational health information exchanges show substantial growth, but long-term funding for these exchanges is a problem. Also, quote, findings suggest that despite progress, there is substantial risk that many current efforts to promote health information exchange will fail when public funds supporting these initiatives are depleted, unquote. Therefore, challenges for scaling the HIEO model are exacerbated by the issue of sustainable funding. This concludes Lecture B of Exchange of Health Information, Health Information Exchange Organizations. In summary, interconnecting large provider organizations is an appealing way to advance health information exchange. However, there are several challenges. The HIEO model was proposed in 2005 to overcome some of the challenges. New York State, in particular, invested heavily in the HIEO's model, where HIEOs were called RIOs. The HIEO's model of health information exchange appears to have some benefit, but more research is needed. Finally, there are challenges to scaling the HIEO model.